Christopher there, and welcome to this video on playing smooth arpeggios. The only way you're going to play smooth arpeggios is if you have the same amount of space between each note that you're playing. So it's not just about the precision of the chord you're playing everywhere, it's about the ability, and that's what the focus of this video is on, to play the same space between, otherwise it's going to sound a bit like, you know, just a bit like all broken up like this. That's not what we want. We want it to be nice and fluent, even if it's slower. There's the same space between each note. So that's the focus of this video. So as always, likes, comments, subscriptions are welcome. Have a look at my books, blog, Patreon, podcast, new playlists. Um, links are in the description box below. Now, we're going to break this down to the smallest components and work up. As always, I recommend doing it with eyes closed to lower your conscious interference. And um, what else did I want to say? Oh, yes, personalized. Personalization is key. So uh, use your own uh, chord types, use your own patterns, use your own favorite keys. This is just the general idea, but by all means personalize. Maybe share how you do it in a comment below. So the starting point is this, and I recommend you do this for you know a couple of minutes. The whole video isn't going to be long, and even you practicing this isn't going to be long, because this is something that comes very quickly, and it's easy to apply to any chord anywhere. So it starts like this. You're going to take one finger from each hand. Let's take the index fingers, and you're going to get used. You, I like to do this with the pedal, but you can do it with, uh, without the pedal, staccato, if you want. doesn't matter, but with the pedal, it just sounds a bit more pleasant to the ear. So I'll, I'll use that for most of the video. You're going to get used to playing steadiness. That's what it's about, steadiness in execution, but the highlight being the space between the notes. So just start with a nice interval. You might sort of open it up and play a whole chord if you want, personalized. So I'll just do the same two notes. And just get used to, and pick your own tempo. I'll just do it like this. Get used to playing that steadiness between. Don't be off, don't be like, you know, like all over the place. Aim for the steadiness. So the space, the silence in between is equal. Take that a bit further and uh, try with different fingers. So maybe we'll put an, a little ring finger on the A and the right hand middle finger perhaps on the C sharp because you want all your fingers to be able to do the same things as every other finger. So ring finger on A, middle finger on C sharp. But there's still the steadiness of the silence between. This is important because when we start later to play four notes in two hands, that's going to be a lot easier once you've got used to playing the space in between using just one note on each hand. And then we're going to do intervals on each hand as well. So we're building up. So the first thing, one finger on each hand, same finger if you want, or a different finger, and a nice interval. Let's do another one, A flat with E flat. A uh, little finger on the A flat, thumb on the E flat. But close your eyes and feel the steadiness. Semi-meditative. And if you want, you can move around. So we might, you might want to do this chromatically. You might want to do this randomly. You might want to go around the cycle of fourths. I'll do it chromatically, and I'll use middle... What haven't we done yet? Left hand thumb, right hand ring finger. I haven't done that yet. And I'll take the interval of a fifth. Eyes closed, pedal down. Just four on each one. So it's a nice bit of an internal piano exercise as well. But you're highlighting the steadiness, the space in between. That's all it's about. So you might want to do it like this. And maybe change fingers halfway through. Maybe change fingers for each one. So each one I'm, I'm using completely different fingers. I'll finish on C with middle finger and little finger. So each finger is getting a nice pairing, all possible pairings, but you've highlighted the space in between. Hopefully that will become very steady very quickly. Next thing is to do uh, two notes with each hand, but starting with one hand alone first. So again, interval is nice with a major third or a minor third. We'll do it in F. I just touched that for no reason. Key of F. Um, you don't need to take maybe impossible combinations like little finger and thumb. That's a bit unlikely in real life. So be maybe realistic with the fingering. So perhaps a uh, little finger with mi middle finger on the left hand. And again, get used to the space in between. Get used to being able to be steady. Eyes closed, nice touch, good hand position. My wrist is above my elbow. My knuckles are above my wrist. 
my middle knuckles are above the first line, my fingertips are below the middle knuckles, there's a gentle slope. There's no point doing this with some stupid hand position because you're not learning anything. Now I'll go to the minor. But there's a steadiness. I'm honestly, in my mind, I'm highlighting, I'm feeling the space in between each one. Now, try it. Two other fingers, middle, maybe ring finger and index finger. Let's move to A flat. Let's do uh, A flat major, yeah. Staccato this time, no pedal. You might want to change the tempo, but still maintain the steadiness. Maybe doing it the opposite, really slowly. But you're still steady. It doesn't really matter what the timing is. It's still very, very steady. And then doing the same in the right hand. Let's go to the key of B, and I'll use maybe, I don't know, index finger and uh, middle finger on the B major. Staccato. Maybe I'll move up. Always about the steadiness. I can't say it enough. So you're drilling that feeling inside and physically of the space between the notes. And if you can't do that at this simple level, you'll never be able to play all the nicer, uh, you know, quicker, lo longer things like this. It's impossible. So you're training each finger to be a friend of every other finger. You're highlighting the space in between, which in reverse means that you're giving each note the attention it deserves. Really, really important. Now you're going to bring those two finger combinations to both hands simultaneously. You can do that by making a chord out of it. So I keep going to F for some reason, but we'll stay there. Uh, well, let's play the F major 7. It could be the F minor 7. It could be an F uh, diminished chord if you want. Maybe nat more natural fingering like this, perhaps. Choose your chord. But I'll just do the F major 7. And I'll use natural fingering again, maybe ring finger, in, or not natural fingering, but comfortable feeling. Realistic fingering is a good word. Ring finger, index finger, and then maybe index finger and little finger. And why not? And I want to get used to playing together first. So I'll do it staccato because there's a few more notes and I don't want it to be too muddy for you. Again, there's a steadiness. Let's maybe move to another octave, another, another key even. Slow it down. Again, it's the steadiness, it's the space in between. It's all about the silence. That's nice. Let's go to a minor chord, a G minor 7. Different fingering as well. Different octave. If you can't do this, then don't try to do the, the more larger style rolling arpeggios, because you have to get this down first. If you can't do this in a steady way, you'll never be able to do the longer ones. Good. Uh, at all different tempos. Now, you're going to separate those and roll the chord. So, let's, uh, I'll go back to F again for some reason. My fingers seem to like that key today. And you're going to do it like this. Get some nice sounds out of this. Maybe arpeggio, maybe uh, legato with the pedal this time. But again, there's a steadiness. Major seven here, let's do another one, let's do B half diminished. Different fingers. Then A flat uh, major seven with other fingering. Again, it's the steadiness in between. Now, moving forward, you'll try that with three. I won't go into it in too much detail, don't need to make the video too long, but you'll, you'll get the idea. Three fingers in the left, three fingers in the right, then bring them together simultaneously and then open them. So I'll just do that once. Let's go to the key of E. Haven't done that yet. Uh, e uh, minor. No pedal this time. Natural fingering for this one because it's more of a chord than just an interval. Steadiness. Same silence between each note. Right hand doing it <clears throat> with my natural fingering, but change it around. You know, you can you can use unnatural fingering because it does give the fingers a bit of a nice workout, gives the brain a bit of a challenge. But again, personalise. 
Now try them together with the same steadiness. Switch up the major there, it's a nice transition. Hopefully you'll get this and it will be as fluent with the same space in between. Again, you can, you know, do it at different speeds, faster. Or really slowly. Always the same space in between the notes. Uh, then you're going to do them more rollingly. That's a word. You can descend as well, but this is more of an up thing, but you can do it descending as well. Now, if, if somebody isn't watching your fingers, they don't know if you're doing it with one finger. They don't know if you're doing it with your foot, <laughs> you know. Uh, they don't know if you're doing it like this. So it's not about what fingers you're using, it's about the wall of sound that you're trying to create. We just happen to be doing it in this rolling style, which is obviously most, most comfortable for most people. So you get the idea, I hope. Now let's jump to the four, four notes. Uh, we'll go to maybe A flat. And uh, we'll do a, uh, an A flat seven sus, just to take things up a little bit. Dominant seven, raised third, it's a sus four, suspended fourth. And uh, we'll do that in both hands, of course. So uh, let's just quickly do it. Just in the left hand, different tempos. We've got that feeling. Right hand. Always the same space, no matter the tempo. Then together. Maybe with the pedal. Doesn't matter what the tempo is. And then you're going to roll it. So slowly without the pedal. Doesn't matter what. If someone isn't watching, they don't know what you're doing. There's a smooth transition. Each note is being given the attention it deserves. Because the space in between them is being acknowledged. I'm mainly going up in this video, but uh, you can go down if you want. And then you try to make it with a legato. And then try to get it like this. But really, if you slow this down, well, I'm doing it sort of slowly in a way, but you can hear each individual note and the space in between is equal. Make a kind of flowing effect if you want. But all the space is the same. So I've got to that point from simply starting with one same finger on both hands just like this. So that nice <laughs> equal thing where each note is being given the attention it deserves, the space in between is the same, comes from the mastery of just doing this. You know, it's quite a leap. Oops. And then trying it with two fingers. And then bringing it up to three. And then trying to roll them together and acknowledging that space in between. If you want to go to the top, 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 you can maybe play the diatonic chords. It's just a bit of a throwaway idea at the end of the video. You can do the throwaway chords for each key if you want to drill that. So of course in the key of C it's very easy because it's just all the white notes. Might take a bit more brain power in other keys, but you still know the pattern of chord types. Uh, so it's major seven, minor seven, minor seven, major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, and then half diminished. So you can do that in different ways. Or staccato. Or slowly. <laughs> but it's just another way to practice the space between the notes. Get the key of F because I seem to like that today. So major, minor, uh, minor again, major seven. Dominant seven, minor seven, half diminished, 
major seven again. So you can do that in all the keys, of course. Don't need to go through all that. Just a little bit of an idea at the end. So hopefully, by the end of doing this for a couple of days, a couple of hours, a couple of weeks, when it comes to playing those longer chords, you should be able to, you know, blend them because you've learned how to give each individual note the respect it deserves. And the space in between is the same between each note. You've practiced staccato, legato. You've practiced with all different finger combinations. You know, quite quickly, you can develop a very nice finger independence for this kind of uh, sound. So there you go. As always, likes, comments, subscriptions are always welcome. Have a look at my books, blog, Patreon, podcast, new playlists. Be sure, be sure to hit the bell. And I'll see you in the next video. All the best and bye for now.